This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation, specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e-learning to instructor-led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. When we talk about server migration, we're talking about the process of deploying, uh, data, uh, deploying new servers and moving data and settings to those new servers. This is usually done after the upgrade of the directory services is complete, upgrading it to Windows Server 2008 or Server 2008 R2. The Active Directory migration really only entails the actual domain controllers themselves. Usually has little to do with the file and print services, although in some cases certain updates may be required. All previous operating systems back to Windows 2000 can be migrated to Server 2008 or Server 2008 R2, and it will use different sets of tools depending on the roles that we're migrating as well as the source operating system. We also could be just doing complete migrations or simply partial migrations of data and settings depending on our actual business requirements. It's important to determine the method that's going to be used to upgrade the operating system. And so that really is the first determination in, uh, in going through the process of server migration. Whether or not we're going to use an in-place upgrade or a migration, that's going to depend on several different factors. The first factor would be new hardware availability. You know, I do have to have new hardware for a side-by-side -side type of migration. If I'm trying to utilize existing hardware, because either I want to or I have to, then upgrade is going to be the only scenario to be chosen. Usually, though, we can take advantage. I mean, one of the nice things about deploying a new operating system from the, an IT administrator's perspective is we get uh, new hardware. You know, we get new, more functional servers, and hardware comes a long way in just a little bit of time. And so if the budget is there and the new hardware is available, then we would be able to and would probably like to perform a server migration. Uh, old hardware compatibility with the new operating system, on, the, on that side it would be required for in-place upgrades. So if I don't have new hardware available or more than likely I, I want to take advantage of existing hardware, you know, I have a server that's only three years old running 2003 SP2 or 2003 R2 I should say and I want to take advantage it's working just fine for our scenario well we need to make sure in that case it's compatible with the new OS uh, we look for operating system compatibility when we're doing in-place upgrades we know there are certain restrictions and so if we have 32-bit architecture we're going to be limited as to if we can do the in-place upgrade also look at upgrade and migration speed in comparison with the business requirements. Generally speaking, the upgrade process is faster because it's simpler. The migration process is going to take a little bit longer. That doesn't mean you'll never choose the migration process. It's in relation to your business requirements. In fact, really, migration is often the upgrade of choice uh, based on several factors like hardware and software restrictions or servers that have reached the maximum lifetime uh, and performance you know, capabilities, those kinds of things. It's often just nice to start out fresh. So let's go through the process of migration as it deals with just server migration. You know, we have the pre-migration or the planning phase. Now that checks on service quality to make sure we're going to have smooth operations during this migration process. We need to make sure that both the source and the target computers meet all of the requirements. This is both for the operating system as well as hardware requirements due to performance and recovery. Specifically speaking of file servers, we need to make sure that the new server is set up, you know, pretty similarly, if not identically, to the old server as it relates to disk arrays, RAID levels, access to a storage area network, you know, those kinds of things. So they need to meet all of our performance requirements, We're not really just talking about the minimum requirements. And then we would be preparing the servers uh, for migration. The migration or execution phases is actually migrating data and settings from the source server for that selected role. And we'll be using tools like the Windows Server Migration Tools, a very handy set of tools that Microsoft has provided to walk us through the whole migration process, make sure that we don't leave anything out, and to make sure that the overall 
uh, uh, deployment process is successful. If full migration is performed, the source server may be temporarily decommissioned. Now we say temporarily decommissioned because it would be pending verification. We don't just want to uninstall, you know, and, and completely uh, take the system off. We want to make it so that we have a rollback plan. So we'll make sure and verify that all the files have been replicated and all the printers are accessible and things like that before taking that server offline. Then we have post-migration, or the verification phase. In this phase, we would be checking to make sure that the migration was actually carried out effectively. We'd be looking at logs to make sure that we have had an error-free migration. Any errors that have occurred, we then need to troubleshoot the process, see exactly what might have happened. We might need to redo uh, that, that portion of the migration process. We may need to roll back. You know. Uh, and then the old server is going to be permanently decommissioned once we have verified uh, that everything is complete and the migration is determined to be error free. I've fixed any problems that came up. And then of course there are troubleshooting phases. I mean really any options that are not correctly configured would have to be remedied. And as we said that's redeployed or re-migrated, uh, rolled back. Uh, that's an option that can occur if I am unable to remedy the situation, at which point we would probably go back to the planning phases and decide exactly what we are going to do. Now there's a variety of different roles and features that are available for migration to Windows Server 2008 R2, some of which are new roles and features that were first available in the latest operating system. Okay, so for instance, ADCS and ADDS, well the first time those were available were in the original version of Windows Server 2008. It's not that certificate services weren't available, but certificate services as it relates to Active Directory and Active Directory domain services were. Uh, branch cache. Branch cache is new to Windows Server 2008 R2. So the only time you're going to be migrating that is if you're probably transitioning to new server hardware and installing a, a different machine. DHCP can be migrated in this way with the server migration tools, file services, uh, Hyper-V, which was introduced in Windows Server 2008 but can be upgraded to Server 2008 R2, uh, WSUS, the, the print services as well, can all be migrated. So these are the roles and features. Now that does not mean that you can't upgrade other systems. It simply means that these other systems may need to be manually uh, done we have the Windows Server migration tools which are going to help us through this process. And so it's for these roles and features that we've mentioned that these migration tools will, will assist us. So it, we've just kind of gone through an introduction. What is server migration? What are the main phases and processes? And an introduction to the tools that we're going to use. In the next section, we're going to get in a little bit deeper with the actual server migration tools that will assist us in this process.